I'm really excited to have on the phone with me Ellie Holcomb. Ellie, thanks for spending some time with us and taking some time out of your busy day uh, just to talk on the phone a little bit. Absolutely. So happy to. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you in person here in Syracuse on Friday, May 1st as part of the table tour with yourself, Stephen Curtis Chapman, Brandon Heath, and, and Love and the Outcome. And as we look forward to that, there, there may be those who, who aren't familiar with you and with your music. And, and we see you as part of this big tour with, you know, with lots of people that are coming in, great musicians, great performers, and, and so forth. But I'm sure there's a story in there of how, you know, how did you get here? How, how did you get started in, in music? You know what? I am a total accidental musician. Um, I, I actually got my master's in education. Um, and then my husband, about eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, really, um, convinced me to quit my teaching job and join his band. Uh, It's it's a band called Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors. We're in a triple-A Americana world. And so toured with him for those eight years. And then um, along the way, began to write songs to really work out my faith and um, started trying to memorize scripture. And that absolutely changed my life. So I started writing songs, sitting in God's word, and just kind of letting the music come out. And so um, when I actually quit my husband's band to be a stay-at-home mom with my little girl, and the Lord just kind of really had different plans for me to make a record and kind of start this other whole music career. Um, So I'm about a year in of playing and singing my own songs, and I absolutely love it. Wow, well, that's great. Well, you mentioned that you have a master's degree in education, and you t- actually, I think you actually taught middle school and high school English. My my wife was also a teacher. She taught high school science, so so I can definitely relate, especially those first years of teaching when you're kind of getting everything all together. Did, did you enjoy teaching? How how did 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 the time you spent teaching did that influence what you're doing now at all? Like in terms of your music? Absolutely. I, I think I I loved teaching. I loved it. I loved being with kids every day, and um and I love basically getting to see and speak good see good things in them and call good things out of my students um so i just oh man it is it's one of my favorite things ever did it was really hard to walk away from um but i think what i what i saw when i was teaching i was always singing in the classroom um i saw that music was a really amazing way to connect people's stories and so I, I think there was there was um, there will always be a part of me that you know would love to go back to teaching I don't miss the grading though I will say that I don't <laughs> miss any papers <laughs> Well, I know, I know you, you mentioned you were on tour with your husband, Drew, and his band, The Neighbors. Uh, and, I, and I also know that your father is Brown Bannister, a very accomplished songwriter, producer, uh, been in the business for a long time, and worked with a lot of people like Amy Grant, Petra, Third Day, and even Stephen Curtis Chapman, who you're on tour with. How, how has that played a role in your development as a songwriter, as a musician, and even potentially as a performer as well? You know, I, I loved getting, just as a little kid even, I, I saw my dad, um, he would get teared up talking about the power that music has to bring people hope and encouragement and light. And so from a very young age, I, I caught the vision that music um, can have a pretty powerful impact on people's lives. He would tear up, you know, talking about records that he was working, some of the artists that you mentioned you know about the records that they were making together and so I think as a I just knew that there was a lot of purpose in pursuing music and so I saw that from a very young age and also I saw that it it has there's a lot of cost and sacrifice to being a musician you're gone on the road a lot and so I actually um I'm really grateful for the vision that my dad gave me, one, of um, the power of music to encourage and to speak life into dark places, but two, the the reality that it's not just this, um, I was not enamored with fame or success in music at all. I knew that there was a lot of hard work that goes into making records and touring them, and so um, I'm grateful for that balance perspective for my dad. Yeah, I think that's that's something that you can only get with, with experience, and it doesn't seem like that's something that you can be instructed or, or learn without actually having gone through that or seeing that. 
on your own. So that that perspective, I think, is something that 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 is invaluable. Something that that comes along, and you just you have to you have to be in that, and you have to uh, sort of experience that to to make it your own. Well, as a songwriter yourself, you know, when you sit down to write a new song, where where do you look for inspiration? I mean, there are so many things out there that that you could draw from, whether it be situations and so forth. Where where do you where do you go? Um, well, a few years back, I, I started um, memorizing scripture with a friend of mine who struggles with depression, and it, it, sort of in an effort because we both realized there's just so many lies that we believe. There's so many lies that we believe, and so we thought maybe it's not enough to just say that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. We desperately need to hang on to what's true, and so we. Um, and, you know, I, I just got so sick of the enemy kind of stealing our hope and our joy and our peace, all these things that Jesus says comes to give us. So I just, I got kind of mad one day, and I was like, you know what? We're not going down without a fight. You and me are going to start memorizing scripture, and we're going to call them our fighting words. And so we started doing that, and it was amazing because as we memorized God's word together, which isn't easy, um, but we it didn't necessarily, and it didn't change our circumstances, but it started changing us from the inside out. And um, and so I think what I began to do is see is that God's not lying when he says that his word doesn't come back void. It accomplishes the purposes for which he sent it. And so most of my songs come truly from sitting in the promises in God's word. And um, I'm usually asking him to help me believe that they're true. And so um, a lot of times that that'll be the case and and a lot of times they're inspired by the people and the stories that I get to encounter um being on the road because um you there's so much pain in a lot of our lives there's so much heartache cuz this is not our home this isn't our true destination and um and things can get pretty dark down here and so a lot of times I'm trying when I'm writing I'm either writing for someone else or or um, for myself, trying to ask God to help me believe that what he, who he says, who he is, and what he's done for us is true, and that it changes everything. Mm. Is there is there a particular song that that you've written that really that you that resonates with you in a particular way in a in a significant way? Absolutely. Uh, well, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I started I I started writing songs. You know really for myself to, to, as an effort to hang on to the light and the truth. And so I think I I never expected anybody else to hear them. If that makes any, I don't know if that makes any sense. I wasn't wasn't writing to say, Oh, I'm going to start a career. I was just writing for my own. I guess I'm really selfish (laughs) just writing (laughs) for my own heart. And, um, so it's funny when you do that, um, Almost, almost every song has speaks to something that I was asking God to help me believe or hang on to, and so, so all of them for sure. But there's uh, there's a song called "As Sure as the Sun," and um, it comes out of the promise of Hosea six three, that says, um, "Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him, for as surely as the sun rises, He will appear." And I, I wrote that song when my husband and I were beginning to dream of starting a family of our own. And I wanted to write a song that would carry the truth that I hoped this little person that I was dreaming about would know in the very depths of their being. And so I, I just, it's amazing because I sing that now over a little girl who's two and a half years old. I sing that for her every night. And it's just amazing that how, how often by the end of the day, I feel like a failure as a mom or as a wife or as a friend. And I'm, I need to be reminded that God's love is sure and that his mercies are new every morning. And so as I sing that, I think because I sing that in an every, in a very everyday way over my little girl, you know, um, it is, it has been an amazing and a, and a very timely reminder a lot of times of God's mercy and love for me, which is something that I forget all the time. Yeah. Well, we're we're definitely excited to have you here in Syracuse. That's going to be on Friday, May 1st at 7 p.m. at North Syracuse Baptist Church as part of the table tour with Stephen Curtis Chapman, Brandon Heath, Love and the Outcome, and of course, Ellie Holcomb. As as you're getting ready to go out on tour with all these guys, what what are you looking forward to the most? 
Um, honestly, I love the way that this tour is set up. I think that a lot of music was meant to be shared in a front porch kind of setting. And that's sort of what this this table tour feels like to me. It's sort of an in-the-round setup. And so I, um, I'm really looking forward to the community that comes with making music together with other people. Uh, and I think, I think it's something that um, is a really fun type of show to watch because you just feel like you're sitting in the circle on the porch too. Well, that'll be great. For, for anyone who might not know your music, I think this will be a really great introduction for them. And I think it'll be, uh, it'll be great to, to hear you, to see you, to get to know you uh, uh, in person there. So uh, how can we follow you online? Are you, are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? What are some of the ways that, that we can st- stay up to date with you? Absolutely. I'm Ellie Holcomb on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, what else is there? I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's, that'll do. EllieHolcomb.com. So it's kind of uh, all, all across the board. If you just search for Ellie Holcomb, I'll be there. And I uh, can't wait to be with you guys up in New York. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, Ellie. Thank you.